the cause of mad cow disease and how the lies affect us today. Oh, so embarrassing. So I'm on a, yesterday during my Sabbath, I don't do any work financial planning related in terms of videos, but I was on uh, Viva Fry's, uh, Viva Barnes uh, Locals channel. And um, some guy was on there <clears throat> saying, I was debating a libtard who says she's not getting any eggs from her chickens. And she says, I, I don't get it. Why my chicken's not laying eggs? He goes, because the feed you're giving them. Have you never heard of the mad cow disease? It's caused by the feed. And the same thing is happening here. And of course, you know, the libtard. These guys don't know what they're talking about. And I was like, oh. So I chiped in. I said, dude, you don't know what you're talking about. Mad cow disease was not caused by the feed. And then he said, you idiot. Here's a thing from the FDA. I said, I've literally already read that piece. And you're just le using government propaganda. And you consider yourself a right winger. And after all these years of what we've just gone through, the fact you're still doing this just shows you. Abandon all hope, my friends. Abandon all hope <laughs> on this earth. <laughs> You're not gonna change people, man. You know, you maybe and all I'm doing here is I just gotta get this off my chest. Cause I've been thinking about it all all yesterday. Um, if you could change a couple of people, that's good. But there is no hope on this earth. You have to understand that hope is in that earth with the uh, the eternal being who created everything and brought His Son to take the sins for our salvation. It's just that simple. There is no hope here. So stop it. All right, you can't vote yourself out of totalitarianism. That's just all there's to it. All right, so let's read this. Uh, this is from a man, Mark Purdy, who, uh, RIP Mark, but uh, we're going to go into a brief history of uh, mad cow disease, which is BSE. All right, the first official reports of BSE outbreak were in 1986 from the southeast of England. Although many vets, farmers, and slaughterers had suspected a trickle of cases in the late 70s. The disease has been an economic disaster for British farming interests as many cows were slaughtered and British beef was banned from Europe. The disease rapidly developed to a massive bell-shaped epidemic. Bell-shaped epidemic, huh? Where have we heard that? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's why we got to have the two weeks to flatten the curve. They didn't want the bell-shaped epidemic. They wanted to flatten the curve. That's exactly what they said. Let me just show you. They did not want this to overrun the hospitals. Let me show you. This is the whole thing about a typical uh, disease or virus, if you will, of course. Uh, good luck identifying the virus. Uh, isolating the virus you can't but here here's the bell-shaped curve that's what it works so they said man once we're up here the hospitals will be overrun so what we got to do is we got to flatten the curve josh flatten the curve so we can deal with it that's what we want to do it's such a freaking so scam i i just uh, <laughs> you can you can see it's a mile away anyway a massive bell-shaped curve, a bell-shaped epidemic, which peaked in 1992 at 36,000-odd cases in the year and dwindled back to 1,000 cases a year when the incidence rate, where the incidence rate stands today, when he wrote this in 19, in the year 2000, 2000, 2002, 2002, spring of 2002. Uh, so we, again, that's literally what happens in an epidemic, in a virus, if you will. Anyway, let's keep going. Uh, mad cow disease has taken nearly 200,000 confirmed cases to late to date. The disease was largely concentrated in the South of England during early days. It erupted in some remote Scottish districts in later years due to the importation of the warbill fly in cows being brought from Europe who were then treated with organophosphates. But we don't really talk about that. So let's keep going. Uh, we're going to talk right here. <clears throat> Meat and bone meal, MBM, feeding versus soy. Protein sources has always been in keen demand for feed concentrate ingredients in confinement dairies uh, and feedlot operations in the developed world, where rations demand a 14-18% protein concentration. Waste animal protein derived from the rendered down remains of butchered livestock alongside various plant protein sources, has been used in animal feeding stuff since the 1920s. All right, meat and bone meal. So basically just freaking you render it a, a dead cow. You render a dead cow, and that's what the protein for feed of another cow who's living. It's just that simple. So uh, they've been using that since 1920s. Surprisingly, with known ill effects, the mad cow outbreak was blamed on changes in MBM manufacturing methods, such as lower temperatures and cessation of solvent extraction, and resulted in the substitution of large amounts of processed soy meal. Soy meal. 
as well as some fish proteins for cattle feed. In fact, the mad cow epidemic has been a boon for soybean growers and manufacturers. Soy has been used for many years as a principal ration for chickens and salmon. Both meats allowed in the politically correct modern low-fat diet, you know, but it's not normally given in large amounts to ruminant animals because of damage inflicted on their livers. Hmm. Now that MBM is banned in the U.S. and Europe, again, the meat and bone uh, meal, we render down a dead cow. We got to ban that because it caused mad cow. Now that MBM is banned in the U.S. and Europe, the multinational controlled gen gen genetically modified soy industry has a large pool of new customers. Not only among confinement dairies and large feedlot operations, but also among the thousands of new vegetarians anxious to avoid mad cow disease. Huh, interesting. $30 million of subsidy money from Washington had been plowed into Project Soybean, an enormous acreage in Louisiana where harvest of soybeans was ripening as advocated and organized by Emma Charles, whatever, for the purpose of reconditioning the dietary habit of the nation. Interesting. This is going back to... Uh, Atlas Shrugged by Ayn Rand. The soybean is a much more, much moic, sturdy, uh, nutritious, and economic plant than all the extravagant foods which our wasteful, self indulgent diet, indulgent diet has conditioned us to expect. Uh, soybeans make an excellent substitute for bread, meat, cereals, and coffee. And if all of us were compelled to adopt soybeans as our staple diet, it would solve the national food crisis. And make it possible to feed more people. They've been, at, they've been wanting soys for a long time, my friends. All right, so here's from where I was reading this. The animal farm. Oh, wait, hold on a second. We'll come back to that here in just a second, right here. All right, so let's keep going here for just a second. They've been wanting soys for a long time to get you off what you want to eat. So let's read a little bit from uh, Mark Purdy, who's actually a little farmer and a scientist, by the way. Uh, talk about his farming techniques. Uh, cows frequently partake in the bizarre habit of eating their colleagues after births, after calving. And I was particularly intrigued to watch my own home-reared, mad cow, free cows, mad cow free, all right, BSE is mad cow, uh, mad cow free cows positively relishing the delicacies of afterbirth tissues derived from a group of pedigree cows that I purchased on, to bring to my farm in 1989. A majority of those imported cows went on to develop mad cow disease. It is interesting that mad cow has not surfaced in my own home-reared cows, despite their overzealous exposure to the allegedly infectious blood and lymph mode found in the afterbirths of mad cow diseased cows. Other farmers share the same anecdotes. Another anecdote hails from the farming community of Shetland, where the island folk are free of the basic the, the human version of mad cow, Kreutzfeld, Kreutzfeld Jacob disease, CJD, despite their ancient custom of eating potted sheep's brains. Interestingly, the equivalent of PSE in sheep, called scrapey, has been rife in the sheep flock in Shetland for a year, for centuries. Hmm. The anecdotes are ever flowing. All point to a hypothesis based on some environmental causal factor that falls along, a long way short of the current government's nightmare infection. Infectious ingestion scenario about uh, meat and bone uh, meal, rendered meat and bone meal. From the very beginning of the crisis, the farming community has been the unfortunate victim of the whole BSE campaign. Mad cow. Yet, ironically, the same presiding authorities who are responsible for the foisting of the burden of mad cow are, no doubt, totally oblivious to the fact that more farmers have committed suicide as a result of mad cow blunderings that people have died from the new CJD, the human version of mad cow. A body of uh, government experts was quick to take exclusive control of mad cow research, and very rapidly, the cause of the disease was attributed to the feeding of scrapey disease sheep brains to cattle. In other words, scrapey was said to jump from sheep to cattle by virtue of some infectious agent, and it naturally followed that the same assumption of disease was extrapolated into the human mad cow cjd context mm -hmm. the presumed microorganism now jump from cows into humans bats into humans uh, mm. but this is no more un this is no more than unproven hypothesis and it remains that way today all right let's keep going not surprisingly a handful of folk had insight into the unsavory world of the meat and bone meal rendering business but for anyone who has scratched the mere surface of the global distribution of 
British MBM products, it became strikingly obvious that the very mainstay of the official hypothesis was radically flawed. For instance, during the 1980s, thousands of tons of this very same incriminated meat and bone meal was exported to cattle farms in mad cow-free countries all over the world with no mad cow. Officials have brushed this challenge aside, arguing that the cattle in these countries do not receive sufficiently large doses of scrapie to contract mad cow. But this contra contradicts their current explanation for the 30,000 plus cases of mad cow that developed in cattle born after the 1988 ban on mad cow, on uh, MBM. Again, that's the feed. You're rendering a dead cow, essentially where government scientists conveniently claim that the leakage of micro amounts of MBM destined for pig and poultry feed into the cattle regions caused the 30,000 cases of mad cow. Furthermore, the U.S. and Scandinavian rendering systems duplicated exactly the same prerequisites that were supposed to kick off mad cow in Britain. Scrapie affected brains being milled into feed, yet their livestock remained mad cow free. Now we were told, nor were we told, the numerous unsexual, unsuccessful attempts by U.S. scientists to induce mad cow into cattle that had been experimentally fed or injected with massive amounts of scrapey brain material. Apparently the cattle either just got fat or went down with a sickness more akin to motor neurons disease than mad cow. Despite millions of pounds worth of scientific research failing to ascertain a link between BSE and MBM, the whole propaganda myth that BSE was caused by scrapie became gospel in mainstream mentality. The media loved the theory because it could drum up a viral Holocaust horoscope. The vegetarian and green lobbies, like when Ayn Rand, found themselves landed with a powerful propaganda weapon on their plate, turning cows into cannibals. And a UK scientific establishment could go on drawing generous grant funding for their viral witch hunt without the embarrassment of having to account for years of barking up the wrong tree. And then the government could foist the blame of BSE mad cow onto a naturally occurring agent which with no significant vested interest or official body could be held accountable. <laughs> Almost on a weekly basis, we are finding ourselves listening to the same experts regurgitating the state, the same stereotype claims of how mad cow has jumped from cattle into humans. <laughs> on Channel 4, despite no reported cases of BSA, of a mad cow, in the British sheep flock, it was assumed that sheep must be affected with it because they had eaten meat and bone meal. We are now warned of the danger of eating sheep. Professor Blakemore summed up the program by saying we should all eat chicken and avoid beef and mutton. But as poultry receive their fair share of meat and bone meal as well, should we not be cutting chicken out of our diet too? The reductionist mindset of government scientists is betrayed by the narrow scope of questions that have been put to the relatives of the new variant of CJD. The questionnaire is almost entirely focused on the carnivorous perspective of the victim's diets and therefore tailored to suit their own hypothesis from the outset. Uh, the British government's Spongiform Encephalitis Advisory Committee seems to have thrown aside one of its most relevant, long-standing observations on CJD epidemiology. People who are occupationally involved with pets and farm animals are at a greater risk of developing CJD. And as this observation that may well hold the key to the cause of these diseases. Did you hear that? The British government seems to have thrown aside one of the most obvious observations of CJD epide uh, epidemiology. People who are occupationally involved with pets and farm animals are at greater risk of developing CJD than eating cows. Why? During the 1980s and early 90s, cattle and cats, the species of animals that had developed mad cow, were exclusively treated with systemically acting types of organophosphate, OP, insecticide, which was designed to penetrate the entire physiological system of the animal, transferring the bloodstream into a toxic medium so as to kill off any unwanted parasites. So my man goes to the background of uh, organa organo organophosphate pesticides, and he develops a, 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 hypoth a, a hypothesis, yeah, hypothesis on that. Remember, you go hypo theory, hypothesis. Hypothesis comes first, then theory. 
Anyway, so he did something. He goes, concerned members of the public helped me to fund a 14,000 pound experimental research project at the Department of Neuroscience Institute of Psychiatry in London, where living tissue culture cells which express the prion protein were exposed to low doses of the OP pesticide. So as to stimulate the context of the living cow undergoing OP treatment. Every single cow in the UK had to have OP, organophosphate, every single cow. And my man, Mark Purdy, he held out, said, I'm not doing it. And he won a, uh, an exemption, if you will, a medical exemption. <laughs> That's why he was able to have uh, OP-free cows on his, on his farm. Significantly, some of the recognized changes of the prion protein, which appear in the early stages of sponge form disease, were introduced induced in these OP-treated cells. Clearly, the results go some way towards proving that the OPs represent a primary or partial cause of bad cow. Yet, it was this very same simple test that the government had always assured me was too expensive for the taxpayer to fund. And besides, impossible to set up anyway, even the most updated lab, te lab technology. I hope the beef industry in America realizes that we're not as way out as had been suggested. The industry is shooting itself in the foot by rejecting the link to toxic mineral excess and organic phosphate pesticides. We have accumulated so much hard evidence now, more than all the other theories. All right, so I, now let me just show you here. We're going to go here. And this is where it gets, this is where it has an effect you. And it literally, it might have actually killed you, frankly, um, or someone you love. It's, uh, or done un untold damage to your family and loved ones. <laughs> it's just, it's freaking insane, dude. All right, we have some of the, we have met the Imperial College of London uh, epi epidemiologist and professor of mathematical biology, Neil Ferguson, the gold standard of a disease modeling according to the New York Times. Ferguson is, of course, the expert whose projections of huge death tolls from COVID-19 in the U.S. and the U.N. Kingdom has supported the shutdown. Looking back, uh, Ferguson has a record of making stupid worst case predictions about the threat of viruses, All right? Last month, Ferguson, uh, uh, mathematical biology at ICL told Guardian Limited that up to 200 million people could be killed due to bird flu. And how did he get that? Well, around 40 million people died in Spanish flu. There are six times as more people on the planet, so there you go. That's science, baby. A Department of Health contingency plan states anywhere there could be between 21,000 and 700,000 deaths in Britain. From 2003 to 2020, the bird flu's death was 455. Ferguson was equally off with his death projections about the mad cow disease. He made big headlines in the UK by predicting the mad cow disease could kill between 50 and 50,000 people. Wow. Millions of cows were slaughtered, but to be fair, his scientific model was right. The death toll stood at 178. And again, if you can attribute that to Mad Cow or CJD, Frank is what it'd be. I, I, I challenge all that. Um, and in, in 2000, Dr. Ferguson published estimates predicting that the number of varied CJD cases might be 136,000 in the coming decades. 20 years later, it probably isn't too early to conclude that Dr. Ferguson's modeled error on the high side. Yeah, and that's not it. It gets even better. Infectious disease modeling. What's the track record? Well, let's go to here. It turns out there's some history here. Basically, the UK has Oxford and ICL. And what happened is Oxford is a dominant modeling group until Sir Roy Anderson left Oxford for Imperial, Imperial College of London in the early 2000s. He left Oxford because he opposed a colleague's promotion to a permanent professorship on the ground that she was only being considered because she slept with a member of the panel, which turned out to be false. But hey, what's misogyny to get in the way of science, right? And I was telling my wife this this morning, and this exact same thing that they did with Judy Curry over here at Georgia Tech, because she wouldn't tow the company line on climate change and, uh, and, and uh, more and more hurricanes because of the rising sea levels and rising ocean temperatures. She actually went against that. They said, oh, you must be literally, you must literally be having sex with men. That's literally what they said. The, the Michael Mann's colleagues said that about Judy Curry. And now she's gone. I thought we won more women in STEM. It's all fake, dude. All from top to bottom fake. All right, so let's go down here. Uh, uh, let's see, we got this. Uh, Woolhouse was working with Anderson when mad cow disease spread from cattle into humans in the 1980s and 1990s. The government asked Oxford to help calculate the scale of the infection. This led to the destruction of 4.4 million cattle, which suppressed the disease. Well, it, I mean, did it? 
did it by the time the foot and mouth is it did literally did it suppress a disease what could possibly have done cause a disease you freaking idiots not you guys these so frustrating by the time foot and mouth disease struck in 2001 uh, Oxford was in effect sidelined and it was the ICL that Ferguson and Anderson dominated the government response to. So now we got this guy, Sir Roy Anderson, he's over at Oxford and everyone goes along with him with his fanboy, Neil Ferguson. The response involving the slaughter of 11 million sheep and cattle at a cost of more than 8 billion was based entirely on modeling and, remain, and remains hugely con uh, controversial, with many believing the modelers got it wrong. The next the imperial model was next big public challenge came eight years later when the swine flu swept the world. Fortunately, killing few Britons because older people tended to be immune and younger people were strong enough to fight it back. My daughter, my oldest, had swine flu. Sucked for a couple of days. Then she's good to go now. She's getting ready to graduate for the master's degree from Georgia Tech in computer science. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Britain, however, was left with 34 million doses of unused and expensive vaccines vaccines there we go baby vaccines they they were left with expensive vaccines big pharma didn't weren't left with expensive vaccines they were able to push that over the britain taxpayers uh, again there was an inquiry which concluded that the ministers had once again treated modelers as astrologers asking them to provide detailed forecasts when they have little to no data anyway uh and here's richard Feynman. Science of the belief and the ignorance of experts. It just so don't forget, Neil Ferguson was the guy who said we're all going to die because of COVID. I mean, literally, he's like we're all going to die. There he is. How many of these people? He said uh, between two point two million deaths in the U.S. and five hundred thousand if we don't have lockdowns. By the way, there you go, baby. What you don't know can kill literally kill you there's no other way around that and yet no one cares i mean i just no one's gonna care their they're, and their models are such so let me show you something else here on my local channel and uh we're gonna read right here at fda i so despise the fda they don't know what they're doing and uh all about mad cow disease so let's take a look what they say uh what causes bsc most scientists think it's a protein called prime. Okay, don't necessarily disagree with that, but what caused that? One sec. How does it, this literally is dated uh, 2020, just two years, three years, two and a half years ago. The parts of a cow that are not eaten by people are cooked, dried, and ground into a powder, render. The powder is then used for a variety of purposes, including an ingredient in the animal feed. A cow gets BSE by eating animals contained with, with parts that came from another cow that was sick with BSE. We know this freaking bull crap. And they're saying it as if it's true. And the, uh, the contaminated, contaminated feed contains the abnormal prion. And if cow becomes infected with the abnormal prion when it gets a feed. If a cow gets mad, cow is likely ate the contaminated feed during the first year's life. Remember, if a cow becomes infected with the abnormal prion when, when it's one year old, it will usually not show signs of BSE until he's five years old. All right. Point being, if you're interested in actually what happened with BSC, mad cow, you should read my man Mark Purdy. I think he's got a book on uh, the animal farm. It is, and you can get it 15 bucks you probably should man if you're interested in this stuff i mean very few people are i get it. it's frustrating um his life changed one day in 1984 when the ministry of agriculture inspector told him he must administer a toxic organophosphate pesticide to his dairy herd passionately committed to organic farming and convinced of the harmful effect of chemicals he refused to comply it's as my, as if my whole life suddenly became uh, became folks excuse me but before they had a chance to prosecute, per, literally prosecute, to make this guy a, a criminal, he took the Ministry of Court and won his case. These experiences led him to challenge the orthodox line of the origins of Mad Cow and his human counterpart, CJD. Could the insecticide used in the official program have precipit precipitated the, disease, the spread of the disease? Next time, we're going to get into what caused the actual cause of polio, by the way. It's the same freaking thing, dude. It's the same thing. Look, I think the organic farmers, a lot of these guys don't know their head from the hole in the ground, frankly. They're just like do-gooders with too much money um, who don't know what they're talking about. No, not the farmers, the uh, the organic, the buyers of organic products. There's no other way around that. Um, I, 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 with that said, the spraying of chemicals onto our plants and vegetables, into the atmosphere, into, in fact, it's interesting, too, because Mark will even talk about geoseeding. 
um, it, it, he'll get into there where they're literally spraying silver, aluminum, crap like that. You know, we call it chemtrails. In the conspiracy theory area, we call it chemtrails. It's one percent happening. It's just, I mean, really, you can doubt it all you want. I don't care. It's happening. We know it. Um, and they talk about this all the time. I mean, my God, geoseeding isn't something new. It's not something conspiracy with a tinfoil hat. I mean, Bill Gates talks about it. It's nuts. Anyway, the point being is we have so much evidence of the causes of polio, smallpox, uh, from it's just, it's, it, it's just, it's, it's the same. But yet, everybody has been pushed to believe the narrative coming from the government as if it's caused by a, a, a MBM, meat and bone meal, rendered meat and bone meal, or a polio is caused from what? I mean, what, huh? It's just the whole thing's freaking nuts, dudes. And, uh, and we need vaccines to solve. All right, love your thoughts. See ya.